Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I turned this sound into this sound. So I'm just going to start with a, a raw sample that I recorded a few years ago and the sample sounds like this. So nothing too special. Um, I'm gonna cut this quite a bit because I really just want a rather short um, percussive sound. So I'm gonna cut everything that's going on here away and then just use um, a fade out. This should be okay. Now I'm gonna just use an EQ and I know I'm also gonna use a compressor afterwards so I can already put this here. Um, with the EQ, the sound is a bit um, too muddy for my taste, so I'm just going to cut the low, lower mids here and also boost the higher frequencies. So. Yeah, something like this. Um, with the compressor, I don't really want to lose too much of the transient here. So I'm going to use a longer attack time. And also I'm going to push it into the soft clip right here. Um, now I'm also going to use some erosion. Um, mainly to add, yeah, just a white noise. Um, to add a bit more top end. And now I want to use some OTT afterwards uh, with well, moderate settings. Maybe a bit less. And I'm also going to use um, uh, drum bus, mainly to enhance the transient and also to add some more low end to the sound. Let's also use a limiter at the end. Now bounce this. And we don't need this one anymore. Um, so on this track now I'm gonna um, use reverb and cut the higher frequencies um, for our boom sound. Well, let's just use the Ableton stock reverb here, disable all of this, set the quality to high and then play around with the settings. Add an EQ and... all of this and also use a limiter and utility and just make sure that quite a bit of our low end is in mono. Um, and something that I'm going to use here as well is a rack that I created a while ago um, called Sub Enhancer which um, just um, adds more low uh, frequencies in a certain area to the original signal. So 
So all this is doing is I have two chains. Uh, one chain is just uh, the raw signal. There are no effects on here. And then I have the subchain, which is just an EQ8 and a saturator. And I'm also, well, I'm only using three bands here. And I'm just boosting one um, specific frequency here with a pretty narrow settings. And I'm pushing them into the saturator. And as I increase the amount here, actually the gain in the EQ um, is increased and also the drive desaturator. That's why it's kind of um, important to keep an eye on this one because this is can sound well rather bad pretty pretty fast. And by this I just control which frequency I'm boosting. Forty hertz is usually a pretty good one. And the reason why I'm using this after our reverb is because I want the decay time of the reverb to affect this. Um, because then I get this sort of rumbly um, tail uh, that still has a lot of uh, low end and it's not just, you know, the reverb fading out. So I think this sounds pretty decent. So let's just um, print this to a new track as well. And what you can see now is that um, here at the start of our sample, we have uh, quite a few issues. Um, so we can go back here and make sure that like the, the first part of the sample maybe is not affected too much. So let's delete this one again. And we can use some automation uh, on the reverb. So all I want to do is actually just to um, automate the dry wet of this one and see if we get better results that way. Yeah, so this looks quite a bit better to me. Now we can also play around with pitching this a bit. That sounds the best uh, in the original picture, I think.